Hi, welcome to Moto Tribe. I'm Laura Kraft. Fred Spade. Sarah Merrill. And today we were talking about helmet. Um, specifically, we're going to target this conversation to those who are maybe new riders or those who are getting into riding, who are thinking about helmets. And we're going to try to go through the most important aspects to consider when purchasing a helmet. I think one of the first questions we always think about is, do you wear a helmet or not? And there's certain states that you know, don't require that. So I know, Sarah, you have some interesting information and stats around that. Right. So I was doing some research on it just to figure out how important is it to wear a helmet. And since there are places that uh, around the country that don't have helmet laws, one of the statistics is that in states that don't require a helmet, that people are 10 times more likely to die from a motorcycle accident. And then also just overall in terms of motorcycle accidents in general, those who don't wear a helmet are 41% more likely to have a fatality. And so it just goes to show the importance of uh, helmets can save lives. And by not wearing one, it can really put your life in jeopardy. And uh, unfortunately, the numbers really don't lie with that. And so it's when considering whether to wear a helmet or not, that's something that certainly stood out in my mind, not to mention that, but also just talking to physicians. They they say a lot of times that some of the worst um, fatalities or injuries they've seen are from motorcyclists who haven't worn helmets. So beyond safety and it just being a smart and, you know, a way to avoid further risk to your body if you do get into an accident, Another thing to consider is what type of safety rating the helmet has gone through. There's three main helmet safety ratings. Um, I think Snell was first. Mm -hmm. um, and Snell actually comes from the car industry. Um, car racers wear helmets as well. And a, a typical accident when you're driving around a track is rolling the car. And so a Snell rating was built off the fact that you will roll and hit the top of your head twice. And so the Snell rating originally was based off of a two top or a two hit um, helmet hit on the top of the helmet. And um, if you think about a motorcyclist, when you fall, you're very, very unlikely to hit the top of your head um, when you fall in a motorcycle crash, you're more likely to hit on your side and probably in two different places because you're not in a car, you're on a bike and, and you're going to roll. You know, it's uh, the car itself rolls and, and you are going to roll. So it's going to hit in probably multiple places. Um, Snell has advanced um, and they have changed that and geared it more towards motorcycle ratings um, in recent history. Um, the other rating that is pretty popular is the ECE rating. And it is a European standard, and it does actually sim simulate a crash where you're hit twice, but in two different places. Um, so it's more realistic for a motorcycle crash versus the original Snell ratings. But again, Snell has um, evolved, and it is more in line with the ECE ratings these days than it used to be. Um, and then in recent, recent years, probably in the past two or three years, FIM rating came out. So that is a racing standard helmet. And that's what MotoGP and that's what the racers wear in, on, on the track when they're doing racing. Um, and so FIM is now available in a, an, a, as a helmet standard for um, just regular riders as well. So all of our helmets actually are FIM rated. So that's the highest standard of, of safety. So when you go in you know, look at these standards and you're going to buy a helmet. Um, think about that. Think about what rating it has. And then, of course, if you're in the U.S., it also needs to be DOT to ride on the street. Yes, all very solid points of safety. But, of course, as we all know, uh, all the best helmets in the world, you know, if, even if you have the best helmet, it's not going to protect you if it doesn't fit you properly. So for new riders, especially that are being fitted for a helmet, it is really important to figure out what your head shape is um, and what each manufacturer 
feels like on your head because uh, they're all different actually. Uh, some are more oval, some are more round. So you have to figure out what your head shape is and look out for that. Um, I personally actually had a helmet when I first started riding that didn't fit my head properly. And I didn't know that, you know, I thought, oh, it, it fit my head somewhat, you know, it's right, but it was a little too loose. So that's the other thing you want to make sure that your helmet is nice and snug. So when you shake your head from side to side, it doesn't swivel or rotate, you can almost kind of like smack yourself and it won't move. Um, and obviously, uh, this is something that you can go and get fitted in a shop for, which we always highly recommend, you know, have a professional help you get fitted for it. Um, if you can't, you know, you can also order helmets online, try to order from a company that you can maybe test and uh, see if it's possible to return something if it doesn't fit you because, you know, fitment is the most important thing again. <laughs> And the three of us have full face helmets and that's another decision that people need to make. I'm sure everyone's mm -hmm. seen the, uh, uh, what do they call them? The, I think what they call like the little, Oh, the, like the skull. The the... The... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we call them buckets, remember. but <laughs> that's it. that is buckets. not the appropriate way to call it. No, that's, that's not the technical yeah. word for it, but, um, um but there's a lot to be said for the type of helmet that's that's chosen as well. Mm -hmm. And it just when you think about a crash, uh, of course, there's the ratings to, to think about. There's the fitment and then and then also just the, the type of helmet that it is and making sure it has the, the protection, because uh, I have I have seen some nasty crashes with people who have not had the full face protection and you can get a face into the pavement, just like you can get a head into the pavement. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, just think about it, you know, even a 35 mile an hour crash, if you hit your face onto the pavement or onto a rock or your bike, you know, you're, that's, that's gonna really mess things up. That is, you know, now you're thinking about recovery time, possible lifelong issues from those, you know, facial fractures, breaks, whatever. So, you know, think about it, weigh the pros and cons for yourself, what you're willing to put up with. I was first on a two wheeled vehicle. It was a scooter and scooters, you don't wear helmets at all. Um, so I don't know that I could like get on a scooter and go down the street without a helmet these days, just because of the, the safety factor. And it's like, it's like not wearing gear. It's, it's almost impossible these days because you get used to it and you're, you're used to that level of risk protection. You know, that it's a very valid point you make, because especially for beginner riders, um, I hear this all the time, like, oh, well, gear isn't comfortable, helmets aren't comfortable, or it's a hassle, or they're expensive. So these are all things, yes, that that is a fact. It's not, you know, it's not as easy just to go jump on your bike and go without any gear. But that is something you want to really consider, you know, what happens in the worst case scenario. And unfortunately, when it comes to riding, eventually we all crash. It's not mm -hmm. if, it's when. So <laughs> you want to really consider that, you know, when you pick your helmet too and the quality of it, going back to like what Laura was saying with, with the safety standards that are in there, you know, you can get a $150 helmet that may be DOT rated, but Will it really protect your, you know, your head? How is it going to react uh, when your head hits the pavement and your brain rebounds in your skull? Mm -hmm. There's helmets that protect against that so that you don't have that shake to minimize concussions and brain bleed. So that's really the thing you're protecting yourself from is, is brain bleed because that causes to loss of mobility in your body, uh, loss of memory, speech, all sorts of issues that, you know, I've seen come across from things like that when your helmet isn't properly fitted or has the best safety standards. Yeah, I think you hit on something really important about the, you're, you're trying to transfer the energy of impact. Um, and if the helmet is too hard, um, then you're essentially just hitting a brick and it means mm -hmm. it's not really transferring the energy. Um, so a lot of the helmets, I know my my helmet and, and new helmets, they have kind of a protection in between that kind of shifts a bit um, so that it absorbs some of that impact energy. Um, and then that the shell, um, you know, again, helps absorb that, that energy. And it's important to note that if you crash in your helmet, 
you need to chuck that helmet. You don't yep. continue yep. riding in it <laughs> because it means it did its job and you need to throw it out. The, the energy has been transferred and you can't really like, you know, re put the helmet shell back together. It's not going to protect as well um, in a second crash. Right. And it's all about that foam that most helmets these days are dual or triple density and they have different layer levels and layers of foam in there. And once an, an impact, a big enough impact occurs, that foam has, has taken in that impact and already protected your brain and it can't do it a second time. Mm -hmm. Now, I know there's a lot of um, discussion about what happens when your helmet falls off of a motorcycle by accident, right? It just falls and hits the ground, let's say two feet. Um, I have actually read, don't quote me on this, but I have read in multiple places that, you know, that happens and the helmets are rated to fall down onto the ground from several feet. So, you know, don't freak out when that happens. Obviously, watch your helmets. Don't let them hit the ground. But for sure, there, there is a difference to my point between just a little drop and a crash. Yeah, that, that is a really good point because I've certainly dropped my helmet <laughs> plenty <Me too>. of times. <laughs> and, uh, and with the dropping, actually, age is a factor too. Mm -hmm. And going back to what you mentioned about how gear can be expensive, sometimes it's, it's hard to make yourself upgrade to a new helmet uh, when you feel like, okay, I've never crashed in this helmet. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. And I've been guilty of holding on to helmets way too long. And it wasn't until I got into like, you know, track and, and we did our, our first race that I, I realized, okay, <laughs> they have rules and requirements of your helmet can't be more than, um, what was it for Weera? Five years, five I believe. Years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was five yeah. years. And so, uh, <laughs> so I've gotten more into that mindset of, uh, okay, um, I'm going to retire <laughs> all those helmets, even though they look great and they look like they're in good condition. I'm going to retire them after that time. It's so sad too, because five years is honestly not a long time. And I have several helmets that I rotate out and I am literally right on the cusp where more than half of them are now six, seven years. Mm -hmm. And I know my husband's been like, I don't want you riding in that. I'm like, I love <laughs> this helmet though. So I am yeah, I'm retiring a few helmets this year. It's sad and expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Not happy. Yeah, because so we've talked about the safety, the, the functional part of a helmet, but there's also the aesthetic part of the helmet. I think we should show what our helmets are, although I think mine's for sure the most boring. But I think we uh. should show, you know, why, why we like the helmet that we have. And, you know, because it has to be, yes, functional, but you also have to like it. You have to like uh, the look of it. Yeah, that's true. Everyone, you know, it's just like picking your motorcycle, you pick your helmet, your gear, you know, comfort, form, function. <laughs> so, yeah. Laura, why don't you start us off with your helmet? Yeah, yeah sure. I'll show you my very, very boring black helmet. <laughs> um, it is a, and if I can get this right, so this is an LS2. It's the carbon, um, the thunder helmet. I love it. It is lightweight. Um, it has a super big visor. If Other I can get that right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm dyslexic, by the way. Um, so, so this helmet, yes, it's all black. It came only in all black to the United States. Um, I'm likely to design it, but I'm also lazy, so that may not happen either. Um, I don't mind a black helmet because it just is simple. It goes with everything. Um, but yeah, you know, I think in the future, it, as the LS2 Thunder helmet comes out with more designs and graphics, I definitely want to um, buy some of those as well. Laura, does your helmet, that's the street helmet, right? It's not a race helmet? This is, well, it's the FIM. It's the LS2 it and I have a Cardo um, system on here. Nice. <laughs> um, but does yeah, that so one have it, a drive visor? No, 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 no. Okay. This is not. Gotcha. So this, you, you can, um, you for sure race in this helmet. It's not the arrow. So the arrow, um, is slightly fit wise, slightly smaller than this one. Um, uh, but this is tighter fitting than their street helmets, which would be like the challenger. Oh, okay. So the challenger has like a drop down visor, which is pretty cool. Um, so, you know, these days I use the clear visor 
and I wear sunglasses. I wear flying eyes underneath. They're really easy. Um, you know, especially right now when we don't have a lot of daylight, I find myself caught out in the dark. And the last thing I want is a 10 advisor where I can't see <laughs> and ride home. So I use the clear visor and I keep sunglasses and put them in and, you know, it works really well for me. But, you know, for for this helmet, I, I really do like it. It goes, I mean, black, it goes with everything. <laughs> Sarah and Anna, they have much more um, fun helmets than, than mine. Well, mine's actually mine's not all that fun. I I wish that I was as creative with with vinyl as as Anna, but I, but as you can see, like mine, I started to work on it. it has like two strips, <laughs> but it's it came actually like solid black. So it's the Scorpion R1 Air Helmet, and I've actually been wearing Scorpion helmets since my very first helmet, which was. Uh, Gosh, I don't even remember how many years ago, but it was like 2009 uh, that I got my first Scorpion. No, 2008. I got my first Scorpion helmet. So it's been a really long time. So I've, I've loved the brand for forever, um, mostly because it's, it's really good quality for the price. And most importantly, it fits my head really well. I did try like a, a couple other helmet brands and just ended up going back to Scorpion because I like the fit and I did have some of their less expensive helmets. But then when I started doing more track and, um, and then was uh, looking to get into racing, I went to the R1 air because it's their race helmet. And it's actually what Quattararo wears in MotoGP. And so it's um, the R1 air, anyone who buys it, it's, it's the same helmet that he's got and he races at that level but I, I really like it because it's um, it's it's fog resistant with the visor, which is helpful. It's very aerodynamic and uh, it's lightweight. And of course, it it has the the um, the uh, FIM rating, which is really helpful to have. And so it's um, I don't know. I've just I've stuck with it all the years because I know I know the brand and love the brand. And so. I think it's just one of those things where um, you can try a lot of different types of helmets, but um, you have to find you have to find the one that suits you, that you personally like, that fits you well, and in that uh, you feel good about from a price standpoint too. And of course, you really can't put a price in terms of your head in protecting protecting your brain and skull, of course, and so. Uh, it's one of those things where you have to uh, think about that. And so the cheapest helmet on the market isn't always the best helmet on the market, but I think Scorpion has been just a good example that you can, I think this helmet was 400 something dollars, which in terms of good helmets, that's actually a pretty phenomenal price for, yeah. for the type of helmet that it is. And so I think it just goes to show that you can still have a good quality helmet that has all the proper ratings and safety standards and not um, have to spend like a thousand dollars on a helmet. That's a fantastic point. Yeah. To, to that, I know LS2 also has a phenomenal price range. Um, I, when I finally, I, I went through a bunch of helmets myself, different companies. I, I, I have a very small and narrow upper part of my head. So I'm an extra small to start out with, which is really difficult to find any helmets in that size and stock. And then on top of that, even extra small, unfortunately, I wanted to try Scorpion and I tried Scorpion, but even their extra small was too big on me. So it's, it, you know, it's wild how that is even the sizing is different from per manufacturer. So um, once I found helmets that fit, I actually fit LS2 as well. And I really love their brand. Um, and well, right now I wear uh, AGV. So this is my helmet. Um, and this is the uh, Pista. Um, it's carbon fiber. And this is actually a full race helmet. Um, it's really simple and bare bones in the sense that it's really light. It's just carbon fiber. It's I'm going to be honest, it's a loud helmet. Um, it's got no really nothing here to, to it's got full ventilation, everything it's meant for track, but that's really what I bought it for. Um, during the time I was doing a ton of track riding, 
Uh, and so those are the helmets that I wanted to wear. And I personally find it very appealing. It's beautiful. Um, I love the spoiler on it. Um, so I actually got really used to it and I wear it on the street with earplugs. Um, it's an expensive helmet. Um, so, you know, it may not fit for everyone's price range, but I work a lot with Denazi and AGV. So I feel very blessed to be able to own these, their helmets. Um, but like I said, just because it's the most expensive doesn't mean it's the best out there. There's plenty of fantastic brands out there. Uh, you know, as long as the safety ratings are there, that's really what you want to look for. So I think we should um, add some links down below um, to Revzilla and we can link our helmets. And so if you want to see more specs around our helmets, you can visit them at the links that we'll include to this video down below. But um, so yes, all of our helmets are FIM and they're all um, race helmets. Uh, so, you know, we, we use them on the street. I for sure use mine on the street and mine's pretty comfortable. Uh, to Anna's point, mine is kind of loud too, but I don't mind it because I always wear ear protection. Yeah. Uh, so that's another thing that, you know, when you're riding, um, it's important to protect your, your hearing. That's a very good point because I know a lot of helmets, uh, street helmets have um, more soundproofing, which makes them heavier, uh, which is why I opted again, because I have a really small head, I opted for a lighter helmet, because when you crash in a heavier helmet, if you have small neck muscles and things like that, you get more severe whiplash, you're at a bigger risk for a concussion. So for me, it was just a smarter reason to pick a, a lighter, tighter race helmet. And when I got used to that, it's fine. But even in those normal street helmets, you're going to have a lot of noise uh, that you're not used to. Your body's not used to that. And I know I lost hearing in, oddly enough, my left ear with the noise reverbing from my pipe. Um, so I am half deaf in one of my ears now from literally just three years of not using, you know, I've been riding for 10 years now, but the first three, I never wore earplugs. And that really sucks because I can't hear now. So don't be me. <laughs> wear your earplugs, wear, you know, wear your protection. I think with that, you know, if you have comments, what's your favorite helmet? You can drop them down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts and anything else you want to leave. 